the lesson for March 20, 2016. Lesson number three. Number one. The date, I just gave you that. The title is Test of Faith, Supreme Fail. Number two, number three, sorry. Printed passage is Mark 14, 26 to 31, 66, 72. Devotional reading, Jeremiah 3, 12, 18. Background scripture, Mark 14, 26, 31. I've given you the 66 already. Our key verse for today is reading from the King James Jesus said unto him, he's talking to Peter now, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, that this day, even in this night, before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. Thrice is another word for three. The key verse, again, Jesus said unto him, I say unto you, that this day, even in this night, before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me three times. We are, we are going to give the lesson aims, which will be number one, as a revolt, result of experience this lesson, the student should be able to do these things. Number one, remember all that happened when Jesus foretold Peter's denial, and when Peter acted as Jesus said, Explore feelings and reactions when one fails to meet the expectation of those who are loved and respected. Number three, practice spiritual discipline in order to build a stronger relationship with God. Just briefly, the biblical context of this lesson is we focus on Peter's denial. In many occasions, this story is told in such a way as to do Peter far less than justice. The thing we so often fail to recognize is that it is almost the end of Jesus' ministry. Peter's association with Jesus was marked by reckless courage. He had begun by drawing his sword in the garden with the reckless courage of a man prepared to take on a whole mob by himself. In that scuffle, he had wounded the servant of the high priest. His name was Malchus. Common prudence would have urged that Peter should lie very low. The last place anyone would have dreamed that he would go that he would go to be with to would be in the courtyard of the high priest's house. Yet that is precisely where he did go. That in itself was sheer courage. It may be that the offers others had fled. Peter was keeping his word. Even if the others had gone, he would stick to Jesus.
our lesson aims is as stated. As a result of experiencing this lesson, students should be able to do these things. Remember all that had happened when Jesus foretold Peter's denial and when Peter acted as Jesus said. Explore feelings and reactions when one fails to meet the expectation of those who are loved and respected. Practice spiritual discipline in order to build a strong relationship with God. Starting at verse 6, 26, we'll read that for you. Verse 26, and when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the garden, went out to the Mount of Olives. Scripture does not tell us the name of this song. We can pretty well figure that it has something to do with the situation. Verse 27, And Jesus said to them, All you shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. But after that I am risen, I will go before you into Galilee. But Peter said unto him, Lord, although all shall be offended, yet will not I. Verse 30. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this day, even in this night, before the cock crow twice, Thou shalt deny me thrice. Thrice is another word for the letter three. Verse 31. But he spake the more vehemently me, If I should die with thee, I will not deny thee in any wise. Likewise, the disciples, they also said, the same. This is from the NIV. And when they had sung a song, they went out to the Mount of Olives. You will all fall asleep, Jesus told them. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter declared, even if all fall away, I will not. I will tell you the truth. Today, tonight, before the rooster crows twice, you yourself will disown me three times. But Peter insisted, insisted emphatically, even if I have to die with you, Lord, I will never disown you. And all the others see it the same. Verse 66. And as Peter was beneath in the palace, he was warming his hands at the enemy's fire. There come one of the maids of the high priest. Verse 67. And when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked upon him and said, Thou also was with Jesus of Nazareth. Verse 68. This is us sometimes. But he denied it, saying, I know not the man, neither understand I what thou said. And he went out into the porch, and the cock crew, and a maid saw him again, began to say to him, that would be to them that stood by. This is one of them. 
verse 7, 17. And he denied it again, and a little afterwards, as they stood by, he said again to Peter, Surely thou art one of them, thou art Galilean, and thy speech agrees thereto. Verse 71, and he began to curse and to swear, saying, I know not this man of whom you speak. And the second time the cock crew, and Peter called to mind the word that Jesus said to him, before the cock crew twice, thou shalt deny me thrice, three times. And when he had thought upon it thereon, he wept. Now the writer uses wept bitterly. Bitterly is crying from the soul. This is more than just sobbing. It's crying from the soul. One more time, verse 72 in our view. Immediately, the rooster crowed the second time. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken to him, which said, before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three times. And he remembered about when they were together, he had said to the Lord, even though the others might run away, I will never disown you or deny you. And he remembered and he broke down and wept bitterly. The prelude to the biblical text assigned for this section informed us that Peter followed the group. They took Jesus to the place of the high priest. Peter remained in an outer court. The servants and the soldiers, that night was cold, and they had set before fire. Suddenly, a servant girl came by and saw Peter. When this servant girl saw Peter warming himself by the fire, she looked closely at him and apparently recognized him as a follower of Jesus. For she said, in essence, are you not one of them? the followers of Jesus of Nazareth? In response, Peter answered and said, I don't know what you're talking about. Again, second time, the servant girl insisted to those standing around that Peter was indeed a follower of Jesus. Again, Peter denied it. To make matters worse, Persons standing around joined in and confirmed what the servant girl had been saying. They too said that Peter was one of the followers of Jesus. Verse 7 points to one of the saddest points in Peter's life as he began to call down curses and claim that he did not even know the man that they were talking about. Immediately, that was the sound of a rooster crowing in the night, reminding Peter what Jesus had said to him. There is no doubt that Peter's love for Jesus was real. However, his courage failed him in the midst of the challenge. When his cowardice was shameful and regrettable if it was not, however, unforgivable. When Peter heard the crowing of the rooster, he remembered what Jesus had predicted. His response was that he broke down and wept. We think of the many times that we have wept bitterly. When we had promised the Lord that we were going to do something, this or that, this or that, and we let him down. 
we don't keep our word. And we read where Jesus is faithful and we are faithless in our growing in grace and getting closer to our Savior. We make mistakes because we're not perfect. But he is a forgiving God in Jesus. We can go to him with our worst and ask forgiveness. And he is faithful to forgive us. Dust us off of those things that hinder our growth and send us forward. We thank God that he chose us before the foundation of the world to be his children. At this point in time, we say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for saving our wretched souls. We don't have to worry about the fire. We can look forward to spending eternity in those mansions that the Lord Jesus has fashioned, put together Already, we have a place waiting for us. So on the other side of the pit, the grave, we have a place to go to. Unlike the unbeliever who is destined for that road, the road of life that lead to destruction, where there are conscious souls in agony. There is no escape. No such thing as plan B. And to dwell there a Christless eternity without Jesus Christ, God the Father, the Holy Family, the Triune God. What do you think? Once one had been in a personal relationship with the Lord, he or she has a certain demeanor and persona. Have you ever visited a different city and been told by a complete stranger, I could tell that you are a Christian. How can you tell? By the way you carry yourself and by the way you speak. Closing thought for this lesson. Unfortunately, Peter failed the Lord in a moment of challenge which will forever be remembered for generations to come. Every mortal man, woman, boy or girl has a breaking point. Peter reached his here in the text. A good question to ask ourselves would be, how many of us have failed the Lord by our actions or non-actions or our activities or non-activities in moments of temptation, in trials, in change, and in challenge. To be sure, we have. We would do well to learn from Peter rather than criticize him. Our life, we should be grateful, all grateful, for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit when our hearts who convicts us and calls us to contrite point of, rep of repentance. When we fail the Lord, he will prick our consciences and bring us to repentance. It is very obvious that Peter loved Jesus and was sorry for his action. For the te text says that he broke down and wept bitterly for his failure. In our world, for a stronger, braver, more fearful life, let us live on the approving side of our Christ. Let us be just in our causes, certain in what we believe to be right, and sure that we treat other people right as we would like to be treated. Consequently, we shall find courage to stand for Jesus in the context of any test or in, and encourage others to do the same. 
I have enjoyed giving this lesson for the third Sunday of the March. So we ask that you check out the website and perhaps you could get some insight as to what we're teaching about. Our closing prayer is this. Our Father and our God, thank you for being our refuge and our strength, a very present help in times of our temptations and our troubles. Grant to us your abiding presence and power that we may be able to withstand any and all challenges with which we may be confronted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.